This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 12, Division of Integers from Module 2. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Let's review a couple of vocabulary terms. The divisor in a problem is the denominator. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. So you could have a whole number, a fraction, a mixed number, or a decimal that either repeats or ends is a rational number. And a dividend is the numerator in a fraction. So the student outcomes for this lesson. Students recognize that division is the reverse process of multiplication, and integers can be divided, provided the divisor is not zero. If p and q are integers, then the opposite of p divided by q is equivalent to negative p divided by q, which is equivalent to p divided by negative q. Students understand that every quotient of integers with a non-zero divisor is a rational number, and divide signed numbers by dividing their absolute values to get the absolute value of the quotient. The quotient is positive if the divisor and dividend have the same signs, and negative if they have opposite signs. The essential question, how are the rules for multiplying and dividing integers related? Exercise 1, recall the relationship between multiplication and division. We're going to take a look at a fact family, and then using multiplication only with the numbers on the left, create as many integer multiplication problems as possible. The fact family that we're going to use is 4 times 6 equals 24. And so you can have 4 groups of 6 to equal 24. You can have 6 groups of 4 to equal 24. You can take 24 items and put them in groups of four, and they will be six per group. You can take 24 items and put them in groups of six and have four items per group. So that is our fact family. Now we're going to take those numbers and we're going to write as many integer multiplication problems as possible. For the integers, that means you could use positives and negatives. So we'll use four and negative four, six and negative six, 24 and negative 24. So a multiplication problem might be four groups of negative 6 equals negative 24. And the related problem, negative 6 times 4 equals negative 24. That's your commutative property that says that you can change the order without changing the answer. We could also have a negative 4 times 6 and that's going to give us a negative product. And then 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. We could have both numbers positive. 4 times 6 equals 24, and 6 times 4 equals 24. And we could have both problems, both factors negative. Negative 4 times negative 6. Negative times a negative is a positive. And using the commutative property, negative 6 times negative 4 equals 24. In example 1, we want to transition from integer multiplication rules to integer division rules. So we're going to use the fact family, negative 4, sorry, negative 6 times 4 equals negative 24. Negative 4 times 6 equals negative 24, and negative 4 times negative 6 equals 24. Use the integer multiplication facts to create six related integer division facts. So we'll take our negative 24 and we'll split it into groups of negative 6, and that will give us 4. Also, negative 24 divided into four groups will give us negative 6. Negative 24 divided by negative 4 equals 6. And negative 24 divided by 6 equals negative 4. Positive 24 divided by negative 4 equals negative 6. 
and 24 divided by negative 6 equals negative 4. List examples of division problems that produce a quotient that is a negative number. So the ones that have a negative number would be this one. So we have 24 divided by negative 4 equals negative 6. And this one is a negative product. So we have 24 divided by negative 6 is a negative 4. Here's another negative product. Negative 24 divided by 6 equals negative 4. And here's another negative product. Negative 24 divided by 4 equals negative 6. So we have four equations that produce a negative number. If the quotient is a negative number, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? In this problem, the dividend is positive, the divisor is negative. Positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, positive. So what you'll notice is that you have one positive and one negative. The signs of the dividend, dividend and the divisor are not the same. One is positive and one is negative. List your examples of division problems that produce a quotient that is a positive number. So this right here, let's change this to a pen, and we've got negative 24 divided by negative 6 is a positive 4. Here's another one. Negative 24 divided by negative 4 equals 6. And that's it. So we only had two examples where we got a positive product. If the quotient is a positive number, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? So taking a look at here, we've got a negative dividend, a negative divisor. A negative dividend, a negative divisor. So what I'm noticing is that both of the negative, both of the dividends were negative. The dividend and the divisor are the same sign. And we didn't write it down, but you also know that to get a positive number as a quotient, you might have 24 divided by 4 equals 6, or 24 divided by 6 equals 4. So whether your dividend and divisor are both positive or whether they're both negative, if they are the same sign, you will have a positive quotient. So the next question summarizes what we've learned about the rules for dividing integers. A quotient is negative if the divisor and the dividend have an opposite sign. And the quotient is positive if the divisor and the dividend have the same sign. Is the quotient of two integers always an integer? Use the space below to create quotients of integers. Answer the questions and use examples or a counterexample to support your claim. An example of an integer quotient might be 24 divided by 6 equals, and we want integers, so let's make this a negative 24. Negative 24 divided by 6 is equal to a negative 4. So this is an example of an integer being divided by an integer and the result is an integer. So that's an example of an integer quotient. And we want to know, is that always going to be the case? Well, what if we change the order of the dividend and the divisor? And instead of doing negative 24 divided by 6, we did 6 divided by negative 24. So let's write that as a fraction. We have 6 divided by negative 24. And that would simplify to negative one-fourth, or negative 0.25. And that is a non-integer. If you have a fraction or a decimal, and the decimal repeats or ends, this is called a rational number. 
So you can divide integers and get an integer sometimes, but you can also divide integers and get a rational number and not an integer. So the quotient of two integers is sometimes an integer, but not always. Are the answers to the three quotients below the same or different? Why or why not? So we've got a negative and a positive, so that's going to give us a negative 2. We've got a positive and a negative, which is negative 2. And then the negative, which outside of the parentheses means the opposite of. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. And then the opposite of 2 is negative 2. So take a look at your quotients. They are the same. The negative in front of the parentheses means to take the opposite of that number. The value in the parentheses is 2, and the opposite of that is negative 2. How are the rules for multiplying in integers, multiplying integers and dividing integers related? The rules for multiplying and dividing integers are the same as long as the divisor is not 0. If I have a negative quotient, what's, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? If the quotient is negative, the dividend and divisor must have opposite signs, one being positive, one being negative. If I have a positive quotient, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and divisor? If the quotient is positive, the dividend and the divisor must have the same sign, both positive or both negative. In the summary, I'm going to show you two different ways for memorizing the rules for multiplying and dividing integers. In the first example on the left, this is called the good guys, bad guys. Good guys are positive and bad guys are negative. A positive is when somebody comes to town and a negative is when somebody leaves town. A positive is a good thing and a negative is a bad thing. So in our first row, if you have a good guy so that would be a positive. And the good guy comes to town, that's a good thing. A good thing is positive. So a positive times a positive is a positive. And a positive divided by a positive is a positive because the integer rules are the same for multiplication and division. Next, what if a good guy leaves town? So you have a good guy who's positive and he leaves town, that's a negative. A good guy leaving town is a bad thing. So a positive and a negative gives you a negative. If you have a bad guy and that person comes to town, that's a bad thing. A bad guy is negative, coming to town is positive, and the result of a negative and a positive is a negative. A bad guy coming to town is a bad thing. Finally, you have a bad guy leaving town, and that's a good thing. A bad guy is a negative, leaving town is a negative, and that's a good thing. Those are the integer rules for multiplication and division. On the right, this is one other way to memorize the rules. So in your triangle, you can put a positive at the top and then negatives at the bottom. And the the trick here is to cover two signs from the equation. The remaining sign is the sign of the answer. So in our example of negative 25 times negative 4, you would cover the two signs that are in the equation. So we have a negative and a negative in the equation. So we cover the negatives and the remaining sign is positive. So the product of two negatives is a positive. In the second example, if you've got 90 divided by negative 10, so we've got a positive and a negative, and we cover a positive and a negative, the remaining sign is a negative. So the answer to that quotient 90 divided by negative 10 is a positive 9. So again, you cover the two signs from the equation, and the remaining sign is the sign of the answer.